not sure if, if I even need it. Is this is it better with the microphone? Or without the yes, microphone? we have online people, so it's always better with always microphone. Always better with the microphone. Hello, everyone, and, and, and welcome. My name is Maria Gracev. I'm the director at the Nordic Council of Ministers uh, office here in, in Estonia, uh, based in, uh, in Tallinn, uh, usually. We have, uh, in addition to our office in Tallinn, we have an office here in Tartu, which is managed by our colleague Madis Kanarbik, who is also here with us. We also have an, an, an equally small office in Narva, uh, managed by our good colleague uh, Yevgeny, who is in Narva today. But very, very welcome. And um, before I hand over to our excellent uh, moderator of the day, um, Sirius Salmisto, we will, um, um, I would like to just say welcome uh, and thank you for joining. We have, um, we have an, an, an online uh, recording as well, so we have also some participants with us that we cannot see, uh, but who are joining us from afar. Some of them writing to us uh, this morning saying, we're ready, uh, we're watching. Um, but I think today's topic is, um, Today's topic is very close to my heart, and um, I was thinking about it uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'm uh, my hometown at the moment, uh, or, or since a number of years back, is uh, Jellivare, in uh, in the very northern part of Sweden. This is about 100 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, so it's 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 in the Arctic, and uh, and and far up north, it's a small mining town. And a few weeks ago, um, uh, we had a, a small event there. Uh, there's a small Suomi um, Seura. Uh, there's a small Finnish uh, association in that town. As many of you know, uh, many Finnish people left Finland during the 1960s and 70s to find work in, in Sweden. Many of them working in mines in, in, northern, uh, in northern Sweden. So in, in northern Sweden, you can find a lot of Finnish-speaking uh, uh, individuals. And, and many of them tend to now, of course, be a little older and uh, approaching pension and, and things like that. So in this event of the, of the Suomi Seura, um, we, were, we were celebrating in advance uh, Mother's Day and things like that. And, and in the middle of, a, of the event, we had a, a coffee break. And so I went down for coffee and cake. It was lovely, of course. Um, the ladies in the association had, had baked and, and made coffee and then I went back to the, to the big hall where we had some celebrations and, and some events and I noticed there were two persons there sitting on their own, um, an older woman and an older man. They were sitting in, in one end each of, of that hall um, all by themselves and, and sitting um, very quietly while, while everybody else was there with a friend or a, or a relative or a grandchild or, or something like this. And um, I sat down on, on, on my chair and took up my phone and answered a couple of emails. Uh, and I looked up again and I saw those, those, two, those two persons sitting there on their own. And um, then the program started and I forgot about that. But I left from there with a, with a bit of a bad feeling in my stomach because why didn't I reach out? Why didn't I at least say hello? Um, and so I think um, today's topic, I know that we will talk about the society and in terms of structures. Uh, we will talk about sort of landscapes and, and cities. Um, but with that feeling that I had from that event, um, there's also a very strong human factor, right, in how we reach out to each other across generations and how we look after each other um, that I think uh, is, is an equally uh, important point. So I think next time um, when I am in a place where I notice that someone is sitting alone, uh, maybe I shouldn't wait for somebody else to go and say hello. Maybe I should take that responsibility and, and, and and, and contribute um, with that sort of human factor and that link. Um, so that's uh, a little thought that's been on my mind for the last few weeks. And now, Sidle um, Salmisto, uh, lecturer at the University of uh, Tallinn uh, tech of Technology. Uh, you will be moderating through this uh, session. 
uh, you're a woman with several hats, many, many skills, uh, multi-talented, uh, also in, in landscape architecture. Uh, you will be leading us through this discussion with a great panel um, that I will uh, let you introduce. And uh, now over to you. Thank you very much. So welcome all to Tartu Opinion Festival. We are the kickoff event, if so to say. Um, and I'm very pleased to see several people um, here, but I also know we have um, several people online. So welcome all he be here and that side of the screen. So indeed, it's a very important topic. We're talking about city living across generations. And as said, my name is Sirles Elmistu. I am a senior lecturer at uh, Taltec Tartu College. Um, I'm also landscape architect and urban planner, and I'm honored to be the moderator of this discussion. So we have indeed an excellent um, panel here. So we have uh, Louise Shell Thomason from uh, Nordic uh, Welfare Center, Swedish office, right? And she, she's a senior advisor over there. We have... Um, Torhildur Gudrun Egilstottir from the city of Reykjavik. She is the manager at the Office for Aging and Department of Welfare. Correct. <laughs> and uh, then we have uh, two local people. Uh, Rin Seidla, she's the health specialist at the, at the Department of Social Welfare and Healthcare at the Tartu City Government. And we have Agulaius. Um, who is the head of advocacy uh, at the NGO called uh, Golden League. So during the discussion, we would like to get also uh, some of your opinions and thoughts, of course. Uh, so you're encouraged to participate actively <laughs> uh, and share your ideas. Also, we have this uh, virtual space in uh, Slido, Slido. Um, where you can also ask questions, but uh, the preference would be given to those who are here face to face. Uh, but most importantly, we also have uh, um, an interaction uh, during the panel, so um, stay tuned. I'll let you know when it goes online. And uh, those who missed the QR code, which is uh, here somewhere all around the places. So all for also those who are online, I can tell that if you go to slido.com and you enter the code 1267557, so you can, you can access to this uh, environment. So let's go. Let's go back to the future. That's the name of our discussion area. Let us imagine that we have the power to travel in time, like the movie indicates. Let's travel in time and let's jump into the future. Let us imagine ourselves in 20 or 30 years. How does it look like? How does it feel like? Can you see? Furthermore, how does the life and the living environment around us and the communities would look like and function with our future selves. So today we discuss about age-friendly communities and how to plan them. So population trends are shaping our cities in future, but already now, uh, it's so it's, get a, it's better to get prepared. So first of all, to warm up and to, to, to open, open the topic, uh, I, I'd like to a little bit to shed light on the concept of uh, age-friendly communities. So I ask you, Louise, uh <laughs> so how should we understand uh, the concept of age-friendly communities? And also why uh, this is an important issue in the Nordic countries? I'm also referring to the, the network of, uh, of age-friendly communities. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is a, a vast question. I'm sure we can all have uh, great things to say about this, but I will just start here um, to say that basically an age-friendly community is an inclusive and accessible community that is a secure community for all and that enhances healthy aging. Um, not just for older people, but for all ages and across generations, which is uh, important to to remember. 
So it's not just about how our parents and grandparents, what we would like to create for them, but actually how would we like to live too, um, together with them, and also in the future, if we are so fortunate to live uh, that long. Hopefully we are. Um, but um, I, as you said, I work at the Nordic Welfare Center, where we, on a mandate from the Nordic Council of Ministers, coordinate this Nordic network of uh, cities in the Nordic region that are members of the, um, the Nordic network for um, age-friendly communities and societies. Uh, so they are all committed uh, to work towards an age-friendly society. Uh, and why is this important in the Nordic region? Uh, why is it important in the Baltic countries? Why is it important in the world? Um, I would Go back perhaps a bit to when the World Health Organization, the WHO, uh, stated that, um, or they started the global network uh, in 2010. Uh, they saw two trends that they were committed to changing and bringing together cities all over the world to exchange around this, exchange and support and inspire each other. That is, as you said already, we are an aging world. We are aging societies. Our demographies are changing, and they will continue to do so. So we need to take action, and we need to shift our points of views. Uh, I think we will discuss more about that later on. Um, they also saw uh, that more people live in cities. We have a growing urbanization, so cities not just big cities, also smaller cities in the country. We need to look at how can we create communities that are accessible, uh, inclusive, not just in the physical way. You both work with the physical environments. Uh, in a town, for example, this park, can you come here uh, if you have a walker? Can you come here if you have a stroller with kids? Can you come here if you have some sort of disability? Uh, but it also, the age-friendly concept works with social inclusion, cultural inclusion, financial inclusion. So we need to think widely about this. How do we live together? Um, not only with our, in, our, in a way that has good physical surroundings, but also we can be active in political decisions as older, that we can be active in, in have social activities and, and com combat ageism as well. So. One last thing I would mention is that uh, it is fundamentally, I think, also about shifting the point of view about older people from being frail, uh, sick, and in nursing homes. I mean, disease and frailty can hit us at all ages, and yes, it do often hit us when we get older, and older people are a vast and very different uh, heterogeneous group of people. Just imagine that uh, you are lumped together as a 20-year-old with people who are 60. If you think about it, then you would say, all these people are the same. No, obviously we're not. We don't have the same desires in life and so on, <laughs> and the same possibilities. But this is what we do with older people. We say people who are 60 or 65, they are more or less the same as when you are 80 or 90 or 95. We need to look at the differences and all the resources and experiences that are there to create with them. So that was a long talk. I think I guess there's more to say about that. Um, I do owe to mention also that the Nordic Network was created in 2017 with cities in the Nordic region that are members of the global network as well as Reykjavik here. Um, and that uh, the mandate from the Nordic Council of Ministers is given based on their vision 2030, that the Nordic region should be the most integrated and socially sustainable for all ages. So that is, uh, I guess, the, the main lines. And if I forgot something, please uh, fill in. <laughs> yes, I, I would like to ask perhaps Thorhildur would like to add a couple of um, ideas more into, into that, because this is, this is important to understand uh, what we are talking about. And also, like you said, it's, it's not only for older people, but, but the focus is uh, maybe there, but it's 
it's it's for all it's it's for for the entire lifespan so any 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 comments any additions to to what louise have said thank you thank you very much uh louise made the great pitch on what we are doing in <laughs> the Nordic countries regarding uh, age-friendly cities uh, and uh, maybe maybe there's no, no not so much to add on that uh, but there's one thing uh, that we want to do something and there's another thing of how are we gonna do it so maybe I'm the more practical type uh, and I can share some some experiences from Reykjavik uh, we have been uh, in the network of the global network for age-friendly cities since 2015 and uh, by doing that we got the, the opportunity to work in a very efficient way, a, a good way, because we uh, kind of got the uh, a program from the World Health Organization to gather people to get uh, together, mostly older people. We decided to do that uh, at that time in 2015. And uh, the way to go is through the people themselves and, and gather them in a big meeting. We did that. And we took the eight domains. There's eight domains that uh, the World Health Organization addresses that we should look into. and. Through in this big meeting, we had a discussion about all the different domains, and <coughs> we got out of it. <coughs> we had to just state what is the situation in Reykjavik right now, and do we have any ideas of how we can change that? And we got 96 br brilliant ideas from the older people themselves on what how we could uh, uh, improve the city. And after the, this big meeting, the we uh, had meetings in the different departments of the city uh, with the staff there. They made a, made a kind of a, a, a steering group or a working group. And then there were 14 uh, ideas left to, to do so something about. And when we had these 14 ideas, we had to c make it go through the city council or the welfare council or whatever uh, they, they had to be in the beginning. And in the end, we had this action plan. So uh, this is the way to go, I think. If we are going to uh, make a city or a community age-friendly, it, it, it is to join the network and get the tools on how to do it. And I have to... Um, we will just discuss it later here too. The, the most important is it, it is that the people themselves who know how it is to be old in the city or young in the city, that they have a saying. Because really, age friendly is a democracy. It's a demo democracy way of, of building and planning a city. It's not something the city can decide the the thing the city can decide is the that the politicians it, like in Reykjavik the politicians they decided we will have Reykjavik as an age friendly and healthy city, but we who are working in the city administration we have to do the rest and that is to facilitate the discussion of the older people so they can have a saying on how the city is going to be, so. I'm going to give the word to somebody else. <laughs> I can talk all day, as <laughs> Luis. <laughs> yes, actually, m my, my further question would be to Agu uh, and to look into, into Estonia. So officially, Estonia is not part of, uh, of, of the network. I mean, not, not, yet. Uh, not yet, or or at least I don't know any, any local communities that are. So my question is, I'll go to you, so is age-friendliness or age-friendly communities, the concept, is an important topic in Estonia as well? So w where we are? Thank you. Uh, yes, um, uh, we are thinking about, uh, at first uh, we need to know that uh, currently here in Estonia 20% uh, of our populations are older than uh, 65 years. They are retired persons already 
And in 20 years, there will be almost one third of our populations uh, will be retired persons or uh, older than uh, 65 years. It's very huge part of our population. And uh, at the moment, currently, we know that uh, our societies are building up by persons uh, between 30 and 50 almost, and uh, they don't need, don't know the needs uh, of uh, older persons. Uh, so therefore, therefore, we need to change something here in Estonian society, and uh, we have started to. Mm, do something to change our attitude and uh, situation here in Estonia uh, to be uh, more um, age-friendly here in Estonia as Estonian society or o also in our municipalities and communities. Uh, so, therefore, our organization um, applied to be partner for social ministry and we succeeded to be uh, such kind of partner and uh, we started to uh, uh, build up a network of uh, Estonian organizations uh, uh, who uh, care about some kind of uh, older persons and uh, would like to do uh, something. And we, are, through this network, uh, are trying to influence the political decision making uh, in our Minister of Social Affairs. Also, we have uh, started to uh, built up uh, 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 elderly councils in our municipalities. Uh, here in Estonia we have 79 uh, municipalities and already we have uh, in 25, 26 uh, uh, municipalities already elderly councils uh, which are doing uh, to be uh, uh, more age-friendly in our municipalities. So just yesterday I heard that there are, uh, we have one more uh, elderly council in very southern part of Estonia in uh, Rogue uh, municipality. So, and uh, it means that uh, we need to do something uh, in every sphere of our uh, so social life or, or, uh, or in our life, uh, starting with uh, public space and uh, there are speaking about transportation, speaking about uh, housing uh, or uh, uh, social participation of our older, uh, older population and so on, so on in every say we need to do something and we have elaborated uh, such kind of very uh, small brochure, uh, uh, age friendly, uh, principles of uh, age friendly Estonia and we are trying to disseminate uh, these uh, uh, principles overall of Estonia and we going around of Estonia making trainings, uh, uh, open uh, speeching uh, and uh, everything like this. Uh, so and uh, we are trying to influence the Estonia, Estonian um, decision making makers and uh, so on. I hope there will be some results. It's not very easy to change the situation because of everything is coming uh, 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 from our past. Uh, uh, 50 years we used to live under occupation and uh, during that period we didn't have very citizen activities here and our older persons are not uh, very, very well uh, aware how to do this uh, work and we are trying mm. to study this everything at the moment. But uh, I am quite optimistic already. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I, I see that what uh, Torhildur said that engaging people and, and uh, maybe enhancing their activity in uh, social activities and, and elsewhere. So I already heard uh, similar ideas already what's going on in Estonia too. Uh, just to remember again and to come back to this, uh, the concept that uh, age-friendly community is uh, a concept which is quite similar to some other um, relevant concepts uh, out there and maybe wide known or well known is also a concept of 880 cities which, uh, which means uh, uh, an that if an, an environment if a space or if a living environment is suitable or comfortable and mm, um, 
good to live for, let's say, an uh, eight-year-old, uh, let's say a child, and it's also suitable for 80 years old. It's like a metaphor, so, so it's most probably uh, well uh, suitable for everybody else too. So that's, that's uh, th I'd like to emphasize the idea that even though if we are talking about here probably more on older people's needs and, uh, and desires, so we are always keeping in mind that, uh, that younger generations are involved into these conversations too. It's just as uh, Agu said that maybe older people, at least in Estonia, haven't been so engaged before and we don't know how to do it so well and we w there is no demand on uh, uh, asking a better place uh, uh, to to live and and so we are we are already somewhere but there's there's uh, um, a way to go um, we're always uh, developing our uh, environments being better and accommodating the needs and desires so now let's Let's have a look, or w w I'd like you to share some of your best practices or, or let's say, success stories or what you have been achieved uh, uh, in, uh, in the Nordic countries and also in, in Reykjavik. So wh wh what would you say that you are really proud of these uh, uh, initiatives um, in, let's say, what you have achieved in last, uh, let's say, eight years then? I mean, wh when you started, or last 10 years, so what would it be? So you can go first, sure. Uh, I think what we, you know, in Reykjavik, we are, we are trying to do our best, but we, we are not a kind of best practices. <laughs> we are not the best one in the world, not at all. But what, I, what I, I, I'm quite proud of, that today we are celebrating a house in, uh, in Reykjavik, and it's not a, it's a, it's a building. And uh, what we have been, we have been quite good in uh, uh, facilitating social activities for people. It's for everybody, really. But mostly older people are available during daytime and they like to go somewhere. Uh, we no, uh, when we are younger than 67, we normally go to work if we can. So we are a kind of pendling between home and work. But if you're not going to work, where are you going to go? So we have a, pla a third place, that's these social activity centers. And we have 17 centers over the city. But one of them is especially successful. And it a kind of it's very age-friendly in the way that the people themselves, they, um, they do everything. The only thing the city does is to have this building 10 years now today and one person she is a, a kindergarten teacher who is in charge who is he, she has the keys to the house but the older people themselves they they do the rest and it started by sending letters to all the people at the age 67 and uh, that's the, the year we quit most of us quit to to, to work and it was only about, uh, I think there were 20 people meeting up at that meeting. Uh, and they, they decided how to organize themselves to do something in this new districts with which we were building. And today there are 1,200 people in this organization. I'm one of them because this is the near the place I'm living. And uh, this is, they are having activities all day and there's there's voluntarily work nobody gets paid and they they just arrange different kind of activities they go abroad they are just uh, are enjoying themselves so much and during covid for instance it was such a bad thing because they m for many older people in the in the districts th this is the only place they go to have companies and because we know that um, what the director was saying here in the beginning, there you are, yeah, uh, about the, the connection, the social connection, uh, because uh, as Aki said also that uh, we are getting older and more of us are getting older. So it's a bigger group than before. But it's not until you get sick, you, you get drop into this 
category that people are so much afraid of, that you can't take care of yourself. But we know also that this big group of older people, they are, it's the social health is so important. And that's where the connection between social health activities and age friendliness is so clear. We have to, in the cities, we have to facilitate uh, uh, environment for older people. Uh, sorry, I'm always talking about the older people. Of course, I mean everybody who wants to join to, to be able to be active and stay healthy socially. Because social uh, health, uh, like, uh, like uh, um, loneliness, and especially long-term social isolation affects the health, the physical health, very much. So I'm a kind of uh, mostly proud of these wolves, they call themselves, or we call, call ourselves wolves of the Korpa, that's uh, the river that uh, fl uh, is flowing through the district. So the wolves, they are really doing their job. And I'm looking forward to retire because I know I can go there every day, have a meal, I can, uh, I can talk to people, I can do yoga, I can, I can go and, uh, and walk with them in the district. It's, it's a kind of, if you, if you meet up, you don't ask, what is the city doing for me? You ask, what can I do for this, for this uh, organization, for, for you? So that's my best practice from Reykjavik. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I hear that you are saying uh, that people need a place to go. If we have a lot of spare time, if suddenly, or maybe even addition to your daily s work, because at least in Estonia, a lot of retired people are actually continue to work. So, but but still, there are a lot of those who who don't have that um, that uh, thing to do in their day-to-day -day lives anymore. So they need a place to go. So so the 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 wish to 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 have a destination uh, to 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 have significant uh, uh, contacts and social connections is is very crucial uh, to to let's say all people, not only old people, but uh, but but uh, definitely for 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 older persons. So thank you. I think this is a really good idea, and I, I have been thinking about that also in in the context of Estonia. We we do have uh, various uh, organizations for older people and retired persons organizations and so on and so on. But s uh, still, there this is something different uh, different uh, than than what you described here. But I'd like to ask Louise um, um, about the in general, if, if to talk about Nordic, so what would you say um, it's, it's one of the success, uh, successes that have been achieved? M maybe, maybe some countries are front runner or, or, or some actions are <laughs> really good ones or wha what would you say? Th there are many things to say <laughs> about that, but I think I will <laughs> stick to three. Uh, um, one is uh, network and getting together and, and moving this agen agenda along in a country and across countries. One is um, the experimentation and will to try out new things and create new things for older people and other kinds of people in the Nordic countries. I can, I can mention a few. And also, I would say it's uh, success the way that, uh, which is also clear in, in your story, I think, uh, um, that uh, as a municipality, when you work in an age-friendly way, you need to also kind of look at what is your role as a municipality. How do you uh, work? Uh, one thing is the coming together across sectors, which might be one of the things uh, that is still a challenge, something we continuously need to work on to work together across different departments. But also um, inside the municipality, you, you cannot uh, sort of just inform your citizens of how it's going to be or uh, send out uh, a decree that now we're doing this. You actually have to step out into a 
uh, sphere of co-creation where you don't know the result. When you started that in Reykjavik, you didn't know if you would have good ideas or horrible ideas or everything in between, but you had a lot of ideas. And so it's about actually daring to, to, to venture into new roles as a municipality and engaging with uh, people like Argo and the network that you're creating that is so important to lift this agenda so you two could be should should be matchmaked from now on, <laughs> uh, because we we need we need that we need civic society we need the local businesses in order to lift this agenda and I see a lot of good examples in that in the Nordic countries of uh, starting to build solid platforms in a municipality to move forward. It's perhaps a little bit more hidden because you don't see, for example, the house that you have, which is wonderful. Uh, but there is a big, big amount of work being done backstage as well, which is super important. Um, in terms of activities, I would say something like that you have in, in Reykjavik. And um, also, um, just to mention, for example, housing, one of the important domains here. We have some examples of, for example, in Oslo, where students can cohabit with uh, retired people and they get a reduction in their rent if they partake in uh, facilitating activities. Uh, we have in uh, Jävla, I have to pronounce it correct. <laughs> Sorry, Swedish people, but... Uh, Jävla. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> you understood. So a town in Sweden uh, where they have created a place called Hemlingborg, uh, homestead, hometown, you perhaps could say, which is a place that uh, mixes a nursing home with a uh, sport uh, organization with a school and a preschool. So you have all these generations having their daily lives among each other and everything in between that can be created there. Because this is also something that age-friendly societies is about. It's about learning to be a community again, because we're very used to being kids are in school, adults are at work, and then retired people are in their, their home or their local area where they're able to move around or in a nursing home. So, so we kind of have to create these spaces where, where we can meet again. And um, then at a more, uh, yeah, lots more to say about uh, activities. The Generation Festival, for example, we could maybe talk about that later. It doesn't need to cost a ton of money. I would just mention two. Um, and um, just briefly overview, uh, in the Nordic countries, there's now 14 cities and people more are joining, especially in Sweden, uh, where they're pushing towards engaging politicians at a regional and national level, which is really important. You need that movement. It starts, uh, it can start with organizations and municipalities, but uh, as you come together and grow, the national level is, is really important. Uh, we see that in Norway, in the Nordic, uh, where they have it as part of their national strategy that Norway should be an age-friendly country, which is a really strong statement. So that also means that all municipalities are working towards this. Uh, they have a strong national network with more than 160 municipalities. They also have a national competence center. That's also a hint. They are happy to help and give advice and anything um, to, to help this agenda along. Um, because having a national coordination or even an international, in the sense of the Nordic, we coordinate between the Nordic countries, is really important to support so that it's not Tatu alone, but it is uh, Tatu and many other cities that can share experiences and, uh, and inspire each other and support each other um, in moving this along. I agree with you. Uh, definitely sharing uh, experiences and inspiring each other. It's, uh, it's a great engine to, to get something to be done. So, so I, I completely see, see the benefits of, uh, of uh, being part of the network and and this really doesn't cost uh, nothing it doesn't really cost much um, unless uh, or how to say being in the network as you said before is uh, is that these communities have made uh, a commitment that they want to invest their resources their um, um, time and money to to achieve something but 
being part of the the network in somehow it's it's um it's for free, <laughs> basically. Can I can I add one more thing? Sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the things that are also we've seen different good examples of and created some good systematics around is how to involve and create with older people, which is so, we've mentioned it here as like a cornerstone in the age-friendly uh, approach. Uh, this is not only something you do as a start, that's good for a start, uh, but you need to have ways of allowing people to be invited to the table, to give their point of view, to give their inputs on, uh, yes, on the development on a current basis. That can be through older people's councils. Uh, in we have that uh, in, in, in the Nordic countries, um, in, many, in many, many cities. But also, for example, in Göteborg, in Sweden, they have worked, we ha they've put together a whole new group uh, of, of older people from different uh, geographical areas, from different socioeconomical groups, to have a broader representation. They're called future developers. So they're, they are actually building this age-friendly city together with them. Um, yeah, there's much more to be said about involvement, to involve different groups and all that, but uh, I think I will just say stick there for now. All right. Before I, I ask how it's going on in here, in Tartu, in our local setting where we are right now, I, I'd like to check if, if we have anyone in the audience who'd like to share their opinions or reflect on something that have been said here and to share some ideas. There is one hand. <laughs> Lovely. I hope so. Hello. Hello, m my name is Christina Tolinson and I currently work here at the university, but I'm originally from Göteborg in Sweden. So I wanted to make a comment about age friendly and how, uh, so for example, my mother currently in Göteborg is very isolated and it's because she perceives that the area where she lives is not safe. So I think it's, uh, and you, I'm sure you all know about the current situation in Sweden. Um, so I think it's very important that when we talk about age-friendly societies, we also engage young people. Uh, and we cannot separate this because we also need spaces for young people to engage with older people, but also to keep them off from doing things they shouldn't be able to. For young people also to have a meaningful uh, spare time and, and free time. Mm. And my other comment I would like to do is that, as you mentioned, with this space in, in Gävle, uh, where the different generations can meet. So before I came to Tartu, I actually lived in, in, in Asia for many years. Uh, and in Asia, old people are not bored because they are doing, uh, they take care of families. And of course in Scandinavia, the state help us uh, to take care of the children and to take care of old people, etc. Uh, but in Asia, everywhere you go, you see older people out and about with young people. Uh, and they pick up the kids from school, etc. And of course, maybe sometimes they don't want to do this. Maybe they rather go golfing or you know, engage in their own activities. But it struck me now when I moved back to, to Europe that it is so different. That we really lead very different lives uh, in different generations. So I don't know how we can solve this, but uh, yeah, that was my reflection. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you so much. We, we have uh, Torhildur who would like to say something. Yeah. I I would like to just, uh, because you are talking about uh, Göteborg and uh, Gävle, uh, I, I think the part of this intergenerational aspect of the age-friendly city, it's very important. And we should, we are always trying to make, uh, when we are uh, developing the city, we are trying to get new ideas. And when we gather people together, oftentimes, uh, normally, they just, uh, uh, what they think about is, improving the system we already have, doing something more or better than we are doing now. But sometimes we need new ideas. And I think we really need a lot of new ideas on the topic you are discussing now. And because you were mentioning Sweden, uh, we have uh, in, Swe in uh, Uppsala, uh, the they have been doing some pilot uh, projects on uh, asking the, the people around two schools, they started by doing that, the older people who are living in the district, to invite them to come to the schools and have lunch with the kids. 
And you know, the minute I heard this, it was so obvious. Why are we not doing this? Because in Reykjavik, we are in this 17 social activity centers. Older people can go or everybody in uh, can go there to have their lunch. But by just opening up the schools, and now uh, they are starting to do this all over Uppsala. And as a part of the Nordic network, uh, for age-friendly cities. We heard about this on an online meeting with, uh, with uh, Luis, uh, the former Luis, and I was so thrilled. I said, oh, we should do this in Reykjavik. And, and uh, I, uh, I now have launched this idea, and we have been planning to start and do a pilot in Reykjavik too. If I hadn't been he hearing these examples from Uppsala, I would never have known, and nobody know, because we have so much information about a lot of things, but you have to he hear it straight from the horse's mouth. You have to you know to get to know somebody and to discuss, and, and new ideas on this topic, it's, uh, that is something we really need. And by, by having networks around the age-friendly city, it's crucial. We have to do more of this. Yeah, thank you. Definitely, uh, I agree what uh, what you commented, and uh, indeed, we need spaces for for everyone. But also, if you make your, let's say, grandparents happy, you also make your children and grandchildren happy. Let's say, and and of course, uh, in Estonia too, this uh, engagement between different generations it's all happening. Um, continuously at this moment as well. Our grandparents are taking care of their children day to day. But uh, let's say still there are something that's somehow kind of still missing, if, if to say that, but, uh, and we can make it always uh, better and finding new ideas and this kind of innovative uh, um, activities might, might help to make everyone happy across generations. Now let's look at Tartu. So Reen hasn't had time to say anything in uh, 50 minutes, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so we are here in Tartu. Uh, this is the center of our uh, festival as well. But also it's, uh, it's uh, let's say, very important um, moment here because Tartu, as the second largest city in Estonia, is also well known as a youth town, a university city. So. We have kind of an Im um, a vision that there's uh, loads of young people here, and uh, and that's that's the story. But statistics still show that uh, there's almost 20 percent of older people living here too. Let's say it's 19, if to be precise. So, with th with this context, um, we can still look at Tartu as. Uh, one of the front runners uh, in terms of addressing the needs of older people that that's that's my take <laughs> uh, you can uh, you can um, um, share your ideas if there you know anyone else uh, doing better job than Tartu but could you share some uh, some of the achievements but that uh, do you find crucial for for older adults and what you have been doing here in, in Tartu city government Yes, of course. Um, one little joke also, we can compete uh, really well with Tallinn, maybe, <laughs> with, uh, with this. Uh, but actually what we should do is uh, collaborate. Uh, so, um, hello Tallinn, if someone is w watching. Um, uh, I think we might be seen as uh, uh, front runners, but also a competence center maybe in southern Estonia. Uh, uh, but I think that we are at the starting point st still. Uh, what I would like to highlight about Tartu is that we uh, have um, uh, age-friendly Tartu uh, vision document for 2030, and uh, uh, this uh, is uh, made uh, based on uh, on a concept of uh, 
WHO, age-friendly cities. And I think this is a very good starting point. We had uh, many stakeholders uh, engaged uh, and also the most important contributors were um, uh, elderly, pre-pension aged and, and also pensioners. Um, and uh, with this uh, survey, or uh, we uh, were we managed to set the main goals or aims, and also uh, further research needs, actually. Uh, so um, further uh, research plan we have now, and we would like to implement it to get more specific uh, input. Um, so this is, uh, this is what also uh, Torhildur said before, that you if to collect ideas, so you, mm -hmm. you even didn't know uh, that something exists uh, in, in people's minds. So this document that you are referring to, this, as you said, is a starting point, but this uh, mapped really the condition or um, and opinions of uh, what people think. And, and as you said, it's a start point, and I just have to comment that I think it's a really good to start to, to, to go further, but, but uh, yes. yeah. Uh, I, I believe that it's uh, the first one in Estonia also. May is it? <laughs> I <laughs> have to say I don't know any other communities in Estonia that have that sort of okay. uh, document. So, so that's the major reason I okay. also. <laughs> I. <laughs> yeah. So I. That's the main reason why I thought Estonia. Uh, sorry, Tartu city government could could deserve the the um, the the star of being a front runner. So it's a really good start, but but I'm sure you have other other stuff too in your list uh, as achievements. So so well we can compare. <laughs> yeah, we we do have some other unique things uh, in Estonia uh, as a front runner, <laughs> <laughs> let's say now, <laughs> uh, because uh, we uh, have uh, in Tartu uh, two things nobody else has in Estonia. One is uh, fall prevention program um, which we uh, impl first implicated in 2019 if I'm not wrong and uh, and uh, and the second thing I would like to highlight is uh, is uh, fi fixman service uh, it's it's for elderly and and I see notes from uh, Swedes uh, so uh, we took this from you <laughs> and we are very happy with it. We have had so much uh, uh, media attention, uh, although it, it's already, I think, three years by now, four, five years. <laughs> we have, it, have had it for five years, but uh, a couple of days ago, just the uh, media showed the uh, interest again and uh, I think this is a very, very good uh, thing because uh, we prevent falls at home and it's very hard to actually um, reach out to home environment usually. And this is uh, the place uh, where most falls are happening and uh, it's good we have uh, a chance to give better and longer li life for our elderly. And uh, when we talk about all I inclusive activities, uh, then uh, we are quite proud of uh, our all inclusive uh, walk groups, uh, which is also uh, uh, the reason, uh, well it, it, it's very good for uh, locals uh, to. Um, get to know uh, better the environment and get to know city room because uh, many uh, older people um, just like um, stay like uh, uh, well th they, they lose uh, they go from one point to another all the time and doesn't see 
what's going uh, around. Then we engage sometimes uh, visitors there who are uh, introducing some uh, nice things to be engaged or, or some uh, city special specialists who can help also with things. It's very good uh, for lonely people to come yes. out from their houses and uh, to be socially activated. Yes, and also uh, all-inclusive uh, training groups. Uh, and, and, well, we have, I think, many, many services uh, which uh, Nordic countries also are providing. So this is not what I'm <laughs> emphasizing. But those uh, are my first thoughts over it. Well, it's uh, it makes sense uh, also because uh, city governments uh, they they need to manage within limited budgets. I mean, it's it's probably also the, the case in uh, Nordic countries, right? So we don't have like all the money in the world, but we we need to make decisions. We need to have priorities, and and that's uh, how I see what have been the priorities for uh, Tartu city government in terms of addressing older people needs, but also. Um, more widely, as you said, those e all-inclusive uh, uh, activities for all age groups. So it's it's not only only for for older ones. Anything else? Would you would you like to add? Not really. <laughs> Maybe challenges afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, be, um, Agu, um, I also like to ask your personal experience. Uh, uh, in if if you are leading these organizations' uh, activities to engage more uh, older people, so what what would you see as um, one of the Key uh, key success stories or key achievements uh, in addition to these uh, these uh, principles that you have you have already showed before and also those councils. But can you can you name some some more? Yes, uh, I know a little bit about uh, uh, success stories also in different municipalities, uh, different in different municipalities. But uh, uh, they are so small. Uh, things uh, we need to do in uh, municipalities to be um, more age friendly because of, uh, very very often uh, for mm, people uh, or older older people it's uh, very difficult to reach from their home to uh, let's say to some service center or municipality center and uh, uh, they would like to walk to this center, but uh, there is no uh, benches uh, during the uh, walkway. Uh, so, and uh, in different municipalities, we have achieved that uh, there uh, were put some more benches uh, uh, in everywhere. Uh, you know very well uh, uh, what uh, you did in uh, Tartu about this. <laughs> and uh, some other, some other such kind of... Uh, uh, things I know in different municipalities, uh, they change some, mm, uh, offering some uh, services for uh, elderly, uh, and uh, building up, uh, building up some uh, better uh, walking uh, ways. Uh, it happened. What else I, I can say? Mm. So there are these kind of small details in yeah. our everyday lives that eventually... Age friendly society and municipality depends on very small things uh, mm -hmm. you can do. It uh, not takes a lot of resources even, uh, but uh, if you care, you can do these very small things that uh, life will be better for very many people. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we turn to challenges and let's say I have to say that it's very fascinating and very inspiring to, to listen to success stories and good things happening. But, but I also think that equally important is to talk about uh, lessons learned and something that didn't go well and, and so what we can learn out of that. But before that, uh, I already said in the beginning uh, that, uh, that there is a... There is a engagement plan for this event for, for our audience uh, in uh, Slido. And so now I'd like you to a um, little bit 
think, and, and I'm reminding you that I asked you before to come along with me and jump into the future, right? So let's, let's think of our lives in 20, 30, or in 40 years, let's say. Um, just vision yourself. So the, the, the question is, the big question is uh, for you, and I'd really, really happy happy to, to see what you think, and that can be done in this uh, Slido platform. Uh, and those who didn't uh, see this uh, QR code, again, I repeat, the, the access number to, to enter to this uh, poll is uh, 127557. And the question is, not, not the question, but the game or the, the dream uh, would be, if you could make one wish to instantly make your home community, let's say, is it Tartu or some other local community uh, here or abroad? Uh, so if you could make that community instantly age-friendly, a better place to grow old. So what this wish would be? And if you think everything is just fine, nothing needs to be changed, it's everything is all right, uh, nothing to improve, then just think of one thing that you would like that should stay the same. So you have a chance to fulfill one wish instantly. So let's see what, what people, people say. And let's say we can take this as a great input um, to develop uh, and maybe to find a, a, a new innovative idea, so 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 we can give these insights also to to go along with Tartu city government, for instance, or or something else. But so we already have answers coming in. Those who are able to use their um, smartphones, they they should be able to see everybody else's answers, but. But um, I will read out loud a few of them because, for instance, Torhildur don't have one with, with her. So we are having the answers coming in. I see. I start from uh, from the begin uh, from the end. So what people say? What is their one wish they could instantly change? What they would do? English-speaking activities for different age groups, also elderly. The goodwill of people. Accessibility on public transport, public toilets, etc. More communal spaces where people can meet and uh, affordable places. Better communication. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> it jumps all the time. Better communication and patience with elderly. Um, increase empathy in everyone to really implement health in all policies. Everyday decisions in every area will take uh, will take into account everyone's needs. Then, loneliness reduction. People don't want to be lonely. Um, cooperation between elderly and the city government. That we realize the value of all people regardless of age, and build from that starting point. Develop community programs that encourage intergenerational interactions, lifelong learning and active participation in cultural, recreational and volunteer activities. This helps combat, um, this helps combat uh, and fosters a sense of belonging. And again, intergenerational cooperation. Um, maybe there are a few more um, answers that have come in, but any reflections? Does it reflect uh, on, on what, what you're already doing or what you are starting to do? I think it's just the, it's just the age-friendly network you are describing. <laughs> All the topics there are something we are working on. So I, I think it's so, so important that we don't have to go any, any other places to know what to do. It is just to look around in our own, own uh, city. And I think we have the knowledge and uh, we just have to tap into it. And we have been using many places what's called uh, user design. 
just by going into the shoes of the people who are going to use the w what it might be just to cross a road. I, I came here yesterday to Tartu and I was going to cross the road up to the city council's uh, square there mm -hmm. and uh, I had uh, uh, 12 seconds to go over and uh, I instantly thought maybe this should be 20 for someone to pass to cross the road you know there's s small things to do and I know I for instance in England they have been the, the uh, employees at the uh, metro stations they have been trying to take on a, a, a very heavy vest. I don't know if any of you have tried it. And then you suddenly, it's so more difficult to move around. You are so slow because you have the weight. So it's, uh, it's uh, this descri just describes how much uh, people just know what to do. And we just have to find tools to do, to do it. So this is a kind of, it doesn't surprise me. The mm -hmm. people who are answering your poll is they they d they know they know what this is about, so yeah yeah. So this poll will stay open for more hours and even until tomorrow. So feel free to uh, add few more wishes if you feel like. <laughs> but uh, Agu, you mm. you wanted uh, to add yeah. something. I I would like to stress uh, the importance of uh, information and communication issue also. Uh, all municipalities uh, giving information uh, what they are doing and uh, uh, about uh, important um, issues. But uh, very often uh, uh, this information don't reach to the elderly persons because of uh, we don't know which uh, channels they are using to get information. Therefore, it is uh, very important to uh, study the issue of information, uh, what uh, is the best channel to reach to these persons, and uh, also very important uh, uh, that we, we need to use uh, easy language not uh, legal language to int introduce some issue, but a very easy language uh, to reach to the people. Mm -hmm. I just remember I read one of the um, re research projects. Uh, I guess it's led by the Golden League uh, or um, uh, yesterday about uh, one single man right and i read it uh, i skimmed it and uh, w the information flow it's mouth to mouth and uh, how how does it reach to 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 right people so um, yeah just a short comment i promised <laughs> i just uh, building on that cuz we didn't talk about that communication information so much yet and it's also very important in one of the domains mm -hmm. that uh, that's part of the the age friendly approach um, but I just wanted to also point to what you're saying into the part we have talked about with co-creation and including uh, people. Because, uh, say, if you want to include all types of people, you need to also look in different ways of including, in different ways of getting to them. Uh, so. Some people might be happy to come to the town hall for a meeting. Some people might be happy to answer a survey. Some people, you might have to go to the local area where they live and talk to people who can talk to other people, put up posters, uh, use the local radio maybe that people listen to, or local newspapers. You need to think widely and creatively. You might also have to do one-on-one -on -one interviews with, with, with some people uh, to get this information and also the the communication from their side in um, and uh, walkability tours we haven't mentioned but uh, I think maybe you would also know <laughs> that's also a great way of of getting people's inputs um, going on tours locally hearing how do people experience this what are the challenges to get around do they feel secure do they feel uh, how does this make you make you feel? Can you get around with a walker and all that? So there are many ways of, of uh, both getting information out and, and collecting it back in. So absolutely, the, the question of moving around, the question of mobility is one of the, let's say, um, overarching uh, issue wi within community planning. And um, 
those people who are not able to 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 walk longer distances without uh, resting or or having aids and also it, it applies to younger people and and children and and so on but but the, then another um related concept within uh, walkability and mobility issues or transportation issues is the accessibility so uh, you already mentioned that in the beginning uh, that uh, accessible communities uh, and one of the one of the uh, characteristics of those age-friendly communities but uh, to my mind uh, sometimes uh, the understanding of what accessibility means uh, is um, because this is a quite wide concept we 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 tend to lose ourselves uh, saying what do we mean by that so we can think of in so many categories whether it's physical accessibility is it to access to information and s to and to services and Social. Yeah, social accessibility, but also in terms of physical accessibility and in terms of really moving around and walking around, let's say. It also means uh, that in addition to existence of a space or a, let's say, or a, mm, or a pathway, it's also the quality of it. And it's also if you have a destination to go somewhere. And, and so, so, so there are so many aspects of... Um, of uh, environmental issues as well, let's say urban planning and urban design issues that are affecting uh, people a lot. So that's why why this accessibility is probably one of the the major major issues also that uh, cities are dealing with to improve their open spaces and and also of course services and information. But let's talk about challenges. Uh, we 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 don't have much time left, in fact. So so what what would be the the key lessons learned or 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 maybe maybe key challenges that you have been facing uh, in the nordic countries and in 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 reykjavik cons uh, context and as well later on uh, <laughs> we we have a lot of uh, uh, challenges in estonia as well but let's let's start um who would like to take <laughs> yeah the challenge is that uh, uh, if and when the d uh, the a city decides decides to be age friendly, we have to have workforce. There, there has to be so some employees who are devoted to do this, because this doesn't happen by itself. So, uh, what we are doing in Reykjavik right now, we are making this policy document to until how uh, the the p policy document until uh, 2035. And we are going to make it as a double. It's, it's both a uh, policy for the older people in the city, and it's also age-friendly document, in one document. That is a kind of a way uh, just to show the importance of the age-friendliness, but it's also to make it easier for us to execute the plan, because we have actions plan, and we have to do what we have uh, promised to do, or the politicians are promising to do, so that's to just have the p have the people in s in the municipality to do the job and and have a money. Uh, the f financial situation is always affecting us, as we know, and just to 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 just not only make it an empty word, but just to make the money to do what we want to do. That's the main challenges, I think, really. That's the only thing I can think about. All right. The rest is just beauty. <laughs> 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 okay, Louise. Uh, yeah, so just uh, building on that, so from, from what I hear from members of, of the network, um, I would say that um, one thing that I could highlight is this uh, cross-sexual work that... Uh, as we also talked about earlier, we tend to think of uh, there tends to be a cultural perception of older people as uh, living in nursing homes or uh, just being old and frail and sick, and which we can all be at, at all ages except perhaps living in a, in a nursing home. <laughs> um, but we need to think of this as something that is relevant for all sectors, like the sectors in the in the departments in the municipality that... Uh, uh, renovate roads or build new parks, uh, the cultural department, uh, also, of course, the health uh, uh, department. Uh, but I, I hear that that can still be a challenge to make it 
relevant uh, to make people realize in all departments. Why is age, why are older people important when I work with developing schools? Well, you know, look at Uppsala, for example. Look at the possibilities that are there that also benefits the children highly, that they can interact with, with the other generations. Um, so, so there's a lot of uh, mind mind shifting work to be done from people who work with this in a municipality or translation work you could tell uh, just one short example uh, also from uh, from Sweden where a project leader she has uh, been working with this agenda for a year now but the policy was uh, approved after the the budget year was approved so she didn't actually have any funds to move this agenda along but she She's done a lot of work um, that people, you can do that also, uh, which is one, listening to uh, the voices of older people, having lots of meetings locally, listening to um, what can be done there, um, but also going out and uh, talking with different departments. For example, the department that shovels snow. Why is age an important question here? Well, it turned out that the most complaints they have about the snow is from older people. So by talking to them and making them realize, facilitating how they could actually do that thing a little bit different so it would accustom more people, also older people, that didn't cost them any money to do that difference, uh, but it made a vast difference. And that is a long-term long work where you, you have to build and, and talk to people, again, back to, to networks. But we see that it still can be a challenge uh, for all uh, departments to, to lift this agenda, because there are so many different agendas that are important in a, in a community. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Alko, major challenges? <laughs> yeah. Uh, as we started much later compared to Nordic countries, uh, <laughs> our challenges are much bigger than now. Uh, <laughs> at first, uh, I think uh, we need to we need to do uh, everything to raise awareness uh, of the issue uh, of the age friendliness. Uh, and uh, it's not very widespread yet uh, here in Estonia. Uh, therefore, uh, we need to uh, change the uh, attitude to our people and to, to avoid uh, discrimination of uh, elderly here in Estonia. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, lot of cases we have had, and uh, even in later, later we have had, uh, where even in our newspapers there were w w some uh, discriminating uh, articles towards uh, older persons. So we need to change our attitude and uh, the situation here in Estonia to be more uh, age-friendly society. So, Reen, do you, do, you, do you see in Tartu context what, what are the major key, key challenges to your mind? Of course, I think that it's not uh, any different, uh, different than many other places. Also, this uh, collaboration between uh, departments is uh, the most, uh, the biggest issue to move on. Uh, we are not alone in it and uh, everybody uh, will get benefit from it so why not to just collaborate uh, with the uh, with the team based aims not not the department based aims um, then uh, I'd say that uh, this having universal design uh, must be used everywhere uh, this is what I think must be used everywhere and why not in your home, at your home. Uh, and uh, this is also understanding that needs to be uh, better. Ago said it also. Uh, the whole point relies there. Uh, regarding specifically uh, Tarto, the most challenges uh, managing with, uh, with uh, absurdly limited uh, budget um uh, still we want still to do big things and uh, we try to make uh, the most out of every decision 
uh, that is uh, why we also started to study what uh, Tartu really needs for and um, um, uh, and we have to ask ourselves uh, do we need to really build a new environment or we can start with uh, with uh, placing benches uh, that's a good practice we had we placed 100 benches uh, in Tartu city room based on the uh, reflection from uh, from uh, citizens their needs uh, and uh, and we we always have to choose between something uh, but uh, one example also that we we when we wanted to open the uh, program for pr fall prevention then we had really limited uh, uh, budget also and uh, uh, when we would have started with the offer we uh, had then we could have provided service for two 23 people only but we could uh, alter the um, the um, structure or the logic of the uh, service uh, in a way that some uh, uh, some uh, or most of the uh, meeting uh, appointments uh, were uh, group based finally so we we ended up with engaging 72 people instead 23 which i think was uh, quite clever of us <laughs> we did, we did it <laughs> And uh, and uh, yep, I think that might be that might be it. That might so be. It. I'm checking the audience. Is is any 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 hands? There are oh, there are three hands. Oh wow. <laughs> um, let's. Um, there were a couple of hands there in the left side. Hi, I'm Pirat. I work with uh, RIN, uh, the, the city government. And I would like to add a challenge, uh, which probably uh, is a challenge for all uh, city governments or local municipalities in Estonia, and it's um, data. And as you also mentioned, that we tend to uh, put together all the age groups uh, 65 plus uh, without differentiating uh, the the groups there it's what's happening in Estonia um, and even if we want to do anything that is uh, um, based on data actual data what's happening uh, we are kind of hitting a wall and we are actually trying uh, also with Agu to do the survey um, uh, and uh, I recently found out that it's not really possible to do that in the way because we don't get the data that uh, makes it possible to reach out randomly choose sample in age group 65 plus so we are still having the possibility to do to do the service with those who want to participate but it's really hard to get the anything out from the groups that are used to left out and uh, the fact that we don't get uh, any specific data uh, on municipality big municipality level like Tartu um, uh, and it's usually not differentiated more than just 65 plus i'm sorry being critical but this is called ageism on state level sorry thank you yes, there was uh, one more person hello i'm matis nordic council of minister's office thank you so much for the great discussion and uh, networking was mentioned, municipality, social health system, and meeting places. And I would just like to add one more partner to this network. This is the churches and church congregations. It is places where elderly and young people meet. For example, uh, it all works very well in bigger places like Tartu, but there are many smaller places in Estonia where there is um, no local municipality, 
no post office, no shop, uh, and uh, the only place where people sometimes can meet is the local church. There are 170 or more uh, churches all over Estonia, so it would be great to add this to the network because churches, it is not only Christmas and Easter, it is every week there are two or three activities, choirs, culture, history meetings, concerts, and so on. So this could be a place for a uh, meeting. Thank also. you. So I'd say we take a last comment or question. Uh, I'm Krista Mulanok. Uh, I'm also part of uh, Golden League. And I'm uh, studying um, um, in Tallinn University. It's uh, totally new studies, uh, community work in aging society. And I wanted to ask um, uh, yeah, one comment and uh, one question. Uh, the, the comment is that do you, ha do you have also or yeah, the same kind of studies in, uh, in Nordic countries to study how to age or <laughs> Uh, and this intergenerational cooperation. Uh, and um, maybe also you can uh, give some examples of how uh, to increase the awareness about the topic. Thank you. So let's, let's, let's do the final, final <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> because we're running out of time, but... Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we heard a very great example from the Nordic countries about uh, co-living, about how students are living together with uh, older people. So here is a question towards city, Tartu city government. Do you, is this something that could be done also here in Tartu? Could this, um, because there's a lot of university students there. Finding a living place when uh, uni season starts is quite difficult. And I think it would be a great idea to kind of test it out here as well. I relate to you. I, it would be a very good idea, and we should really do it <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. But yeah, I, I like the idea, and uh, there w should be more community-based uh, uh, places to meet up. And uh, I really hope that uh, upcoming Suku Culture Center also provides some activities there, uh, which are based on it, on this idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So would anyone would like to comment what uh, the previous uh, question was about? Uh, yes, I could. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, there's a lot to say about that. I don't know of any specific uh, education that has that title. I think you would go towards more uh, civic co-creation, civic society, where that would also include uh, uh, older people. Um, and as we're really close to, to the end here, we can talk more after if you would like, but uh, ideas for counteracting is basically every, a lot of what we've talked about. And also, I just mentioned ageism is a lot that stems through all of this. And, and we know that intergenerational contact is one of the things that actually can create more awareness and, and counteract some, uh, some of all this, um, yeah. Okay, let's wrap up. I, I'd like you to very, very briefly, let's say some uh, final message. Uh, so every one of you, if you could say something, what would it be to, to encourage more, let's say community members, but also decision makers, those who are planning the communities. So a message, one short message for, for those people and to us, to ourselves. So who would like to take the lead? Torhildur. Yes, I, I think the, the most important thing for me at least and from the uh, sp from Reykjavik uh, uh, view is that uh, the Nordic coll collaboration. I think there wouldn't have been any, uh, uh, we, ha we, we ha wouldn't have done so much if we didn't meet as we do in the Nordic countries and I wish that Tartu could just join us because in the different countries, in the different cities, people feel many, many of us are quite isolated with these, all these things we are discussing here. Although it's part of the city planning and what we are doing, but only just to address the age friendliness 
it's not something we are doing just every day. And to have the, have the Nordic uh, Welfare Center to facilitate these discussions, which we are taking th across the Nordic countries, and I hope the Baltic countries will also join the uh, World Health Organization and be part of the Nordic Network too. I, I <coughs> I'm so grateful for that because we, we have a thematic uh, meetings, for instance, housing, and what we were just discussing here, and we learn so much from each other. And I, I have to say that without uh, Nordic Welfare Center and Louise, uh, we, we wouldn't have done it so greatly as we are doing. So that is my last word. Just Tartu, please come to the World Health Organization and be part of our network. <laughs> you will not regret it. Thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, uh, I would like to say also that um, uh, we s just started our activities here in Estonia and we have done already something here. Uh, but uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, our Nordic uh, uh, partners, uh, because of we have got, uh, I have got already several new ideas and information, and it's very good. And uh, my wish is uh, to be much more uh, cooperate with uh, Nordic countries partners and uh, to get some information, some uh, good examples from there and to implement uh, these ideas here. So I think uh, uh, for Golden Lead it would be also good to be partners for uh, some organizations from Nordic countries and to do something together. Thank you. Yes, yeah. and I uh, thank uh, very much for the invitation. We will consider it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, my message to everyone, including Tartu City government, my colleagues, uh, stakeholders, is uh, just uh, let's be holistic about it and and uh, care. Be kind. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. So I will make it super short i will i will say uh start with the the citizens start with people start with including uh and build uh, a good way of keeping on doing that <laughs> um and uh also look at what already exists and how age can be thought into that as a factor in accessibility for example it doesn't need to be big fancy initiatives it can be but there, there is day-to-day -day development that needs to take place. How can age be a part of that? Uh, and, and I would say we all have a role in combating ageism in how we think and feel and become aware of when we have prejudice or think that older people are very different from us. So we all have a part to play in this. Thank you. So um, with these words, I I'd like to thank everyone. A very, very big thank to our um, panelists here. Also, thank you for the invite to come here to Tattoo. Uh, I'm really, really glad you accepted it. So I also like to thank all, all the people in the audience here, but also online. Thank you for your thoughts and opinions and sharing your ideas. And also a big thank goes to the Nordic Council of the Minister's Office in Estonia who organized this event. So we had the platform to discuss these issues. So thank you all and have a great day and sorry for the five minutes. <laughs>